Welcome to the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast. Thomas Miller and Robert Glasscock here, and uh, Thomas is in a sprinter van that you guys have probably followed around my little journey that I've been in for all of 2023 now that I bought a year ago for the purpose of basically traveling around and meeting podcast listeners in various places and enjoying warm weather in the winter and cooler weather in the summer, all of those things that you can do when you have your house with you all the time. <laughs> and Robert, I guess you've always kind of had a dream of doing the same kind of thing, but you are going to be the pilot of the kind of the, the journey here. Now, over on the Fun Astrology podcast, we've got a little thing going. It's kind of like, where's Thomas? And in our Discord channel, people are suggesting ideas of where I might travel next. I've been in Florida for the winter, and currently I'm in Tampa. From here, it's open as to where I go. So I thought we would put up a map of the United States with my astrocartography chart on it. And these are the big, broad, zoomed-out areas, so at least we can start narrowing in on some things. But I thought this would be kind of fun to hear Robert tell me what some of these different locations might portend were I to go there. So, Robert, let's take a look at this and just talk through a couple of things. So if people will go to the show notes, then you can download the chart, the map of the United States that we are currently referencing. And one of the first things that you will see is a red line going up and down vertically that intersects Tampa, Florida. And that's where I am right now. So what would that indicate? First of all, what is that line and what does it mean? It's a Venus line. It means that Venus is on the MCIC axis, the fourth, tenth axis, which is home and career both. And it's Venus one of the benefics so venus is all about love and money both uh and love can be love of a career or love of creative art or a talent and so on as well as another human being but it tends to be a line where you will find harmony and and comfort and profit and success and happiness it tends to integrate uh it, it reflects you uh, the person living under a venus line it's like a hand mirror that you hold the shape of it the shape of venus's archetype it's like a hand mirror in a way so if you live under a venus line the environment and the people in it that you meet and become involved with will tend to ref <clears throat> reflect you in the best possible light you will tend to show your best possible most loving compassionate and entrepreneurial perhaps money-making side under a venus line so tampa is a wonderful place to consider but so is anywhere along that line you can zoom in on these maps and get closer and more detail if you want but that's certainly a wonderful place to be i would think for you then you have this yellow saturn line these yellow lines are where the planets in question in this case saturn is opposite one of the angles the ascended descended as rule so here it's it's going up through the middle of the united states fairly adjacent to memphis not really that close to memphis but up through there and up through uh nebraska and on up into canada and so on uh, then you had and here's something else to keep in mind you know everybody's chart is different many people have wonderful astro cartography lines in the middle of the pacific ocean and you can't live there uh other people and and frankly i have more lines in the united states actually than you do yours are fairly broadly spread out and you can look at the different regions in the country in a sort of similar way for example your pluto line pluto ic line is up there in winnipeg fargo wichita kansas oklahoma city and dallas texas two divorces <laughs> and there's your pluto line yeah so if you yeah and that's very consistent with pluto you know it's a, a planet of death and rebirth so children uh sex marriage family all of that stuff the endings of all of those things very intense very life-changing but very intense experiences under dallas and it is a kind of rebirth city for you in a way i would imagine yeah, it uh, it wasn't fun living on the Pluto. No, no, it, it generally isn't. With Pluto. It's, it's just, <laughs> I'm glad it's to be very, off of it. 
very intense. Same thing with the Uranus line is on the left here in the United States, goes through Great Falls. It's a little bit east of Phoenix, too far to really be in Phoenix. But that line, uh, along that line, uh, under Uranus line, you could be one of these incredible uh, productive hermits, you know, living alone, doing research or inventing things or uh, creating or communing with the gods, but somewhere in the middle of nowhere and experiencing this kind of uh, astral almost relationship uh, with the stars stars lying out on at night under the stars i mean it can be that that direct uh but it's it's very much a, a, an aspect line of independence and aloneness if it's for a good creative reason or because you're obsessed with some creative idea writing a book researching a project uh it's a wonderful line to live in because it can be uh revelation after revelation after revelation part of that is because you are isolated you're alone you're separate from a lot of extraneous influences but if you don't like to be alone it's not uh, necessarily the place to live you'll always feel out of place under your honor you won't be like anybody else there and so it makes relationships they can be dramatic but not necessarily lasting in a place like that because ultimately the person keeps wanting to be alone because they themselves are undergoing a sort of internal earthquake if you will Anywhere along that line can can bring, bring unbelievable revelations and metaphysical experiences, but otherwise it tends to be uh, destabilizing, really, in a way. Then you have your Jupiter line, which runs up Baja California and through its east of Los Angeles, it goes up into uh, Oregon, especially right through Eugene, Oregon, of all places. Uh, which I don't know, I've never been, but I've certainly known a lot of people who've moved there and people who've been from there. And then you have your Mercury line going a little bit west of San Francisco out in the, the ocean there, but it still would be interesting to look at San Francisco. I did live up there just for about a year and uh, not my city. Uh, I was glad that I lived there. I changed dramatically there, met Jim Lewis there who invented astrocartography and was in a men's group with him, a men's psychology group wonderful group that really did uh, change my life uh, there in San Francisco. So uh, you've got this Mercury line. It would be a good area for you to work in and broadcast in. But frankly, that line is pretty much out in the ocean and not really close enough inland to to matter much, that, that Mercury line. But your Jupiter line is something else to consider. Uh, I don't know if you've ever thought about exploring the Northwest, but certainly it'd be interesting to, to be out there for a time and see see what you find, especially maybe around Eugene. Well, a couple of questions here, just so we can frame up this conversation a little better to that end, is how far on either side of that line should we consider? Well, you hear various opinions, and, and different people say anywhere from 150 miles. Basically, I, I stick to within about 50 miles. Wow, so around, so yep. pretty tight to the line then. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. Then yes, to answer your question, I have thought about that, and I kind of looked at that uh, Jupiter line going up through Northern California. Doesn't show on this map. On my map, it shows a little different on Astro Gold, but it looks like it goes right up over Mount Shasta and into Ashland, Oregon, which are two areas that I just love, 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 love and have had really good experiences around Mount Shasta. So, yes, I have thought about that. I've also thought about that uh, Southern California line coming through there. Kind of interesting. Haven't really thought of living there for a number of reasons, num primarily taxes <laughs> but uh, <laughs> and expenses of the cost of living, but it, I could breeze through, I would imagine. <laughs> I would imagine. You know, I'll tell you, under a Jupiter line, Thomas, Jupiter has to do with Sagittarius and long-distance travel and travel period. So if you're on the road, so to speak, uh, it'd be interesting to fo follow that Jupiter line. Okay, we've established a couple of things. First of all, let's go back to the East Coast now, and we're going to work our way west again. So the Venus line that runs up through Tampa, I'm noticing, runs right up through western North Carolina, right where I am. So my little game plan of North Carolina in the summer, Florida in the winter, is probably not a bad plan. Oh, I didn't know you were thinking about that, and that's an excellent plan. It still is on that Venus line, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and that goes on up. So that's a bright spot. 
I guess what I'm looking for are where are the more beneficial spots and where are the more challenging spots? In the so, United States, the most beneficial spots are under your Venus line. Well, there I Absolutely. am. Absolutely. And that's my plan. Uh, the, most, okay. the most challenging, and this is, and the second most equally beneficial, I guess, would be under your yellow Jupiter line, which is opposing your ascendant. It's that's on your the ascendant one that goes up through Baja ascendant. and into California. Way, yeah, yeah. But Venus is a great line to live on. Your most challenging line generally will be Saturn lines. And in the United States chart, the, the only Saturn line that you have is this Saturn opposites on the ascendant descendant axis. That's that yellow line that goes up a little east of Memphis and so on and goes up north there. So that's that would be, and usually under a Saturn line, you work the hardest and you learn the most, but it's not necessarily easy. Okay. It can be great if you're an ambitious type and, and then you're a hard worker. And then I've already proved up the Pluto line. Yes, you have. <laughs> yes, danger, you have. danger, warning, warning. Well, <laughs> Periscope, no, it, it, we're diving. It, cha <laughs> it changed your life. Oh, it, it did. really did. Yeah, yeah. it did. And actually, Dallas was fairly good to me business-wise. I'll bet. And then I would avoid that Saturn red line over there by Phoenix. Well, you know, it it just depends. You've got what by Phoenix? You've actually, got a, you know what? It's that a would Uranus go, line, not a. Oh, Saturn is it Uranus? Line. I know it's yeah. hard to see. So yeah, it is. That would go right up through Sedona, wouldn't it? No wonder well, I've had I'd all those to, experiences I'd have with in. I'd Sedona. Have to zoom in on Arizona oh. to see. <laughs> yeah. No, that's uh, actually it's probably I don't know if we'd be within the fifty miles it of looks Sedona, close, but it's though. close. Yeah, it is close. That's why I've had those amazing experiences there. Oh man. And you can adjust, you know, in this program, you can adjust these orbs to whatever you like. I think it, I forget where it's set. But even the, I think the help menus on these things will tell you the, the range to expect of influence, really. And the further away you get from about 50, 60 miles, the less I think it, 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 it matters. And you have a lot of blank spaces here that have no lines. That doesn't mean bad or good. It's just that there's no particular astrological influence that's predominating there. That's all. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. So mine so has really, a few if lines. You live somewhere, if you live somewhere that do, doesn't have any lines at all, uh, th which happens a lot, actually. As I say, people have major lines in the middle of the ocean, can't live there. So, but if you have no lines at all, it really is neutral in that, in, as, in, in, in the astro cartography sense. No planets are particularly aspecting angles in your chart, either the ascended, descended, or the IC, MC axis. That's all this means. So, so then you're, you're free, you know, to, to live wherever you, you really like to. Some people really do use these things. I'll tell you what, one thing I have discovered, and I will make, a, I think, a definitive statement here, that in my opinion, changing your geography can definitely change things in your life. I've experienced Absolutely. it. It's worked Absolutely. for me. All right, so let's do this. Over on Fun Astrology, we're kind of playing this Where's Waldo game, except Waldo is Thomas. So people are suggesting that I come to different places. One of the places that people want me to come is up around, oh, Chicago and Detroit and up in that part, which I have never really explored to great length. But there's no astrology up there, right? Not directly, no. Uh, yeah, not so we're not going to hit that, all right? Mm -hmm. So I like the Venus line, and I've already got the bases covered on that because I'm in western North Carolina. I'm currently in Florida. I've been down here the last two winters, and I've really on this trip figured the state out a lot better, better and I do prefer this side of the state. I like the, the Gulf side a lot better than the Atlantic side. So I could keep that going a little bit longer. But where would you suggest that I take a look at from this map, other than where I already have been, North Carolina and Florida? It depends on what you're looking for, but I'll tell you this uh, idea that you have of keeping North Carolina and uh, a second place in, in Tampa under that Venus. They're both under the Venus line. I think that's right off the bat. That's clear thinking, and it's astrologically very sound. According to astrocartography, it is. And where where would I suggest? I should go explore that Jupiter line, shouldn't I? Well, I would I would suggest the West Coast out there, yeah. Well, I do have a van, and the yes. nice thing about the van is if you don't like where you are, 
It's like the weather. You can, you can change it in about on. 20 minutes. <laughs> you can move on. Move on. And so, I'll tell you, it's not that far from Reno to Eugene. <laughs> so well, I don't know. With this line going right through to Eugene, that would certainly be a place to, to park and, and, and meditate for a minute. Okay. All right. Yeah. And that's okay. I see what you're saying. So that's the major city that's on that line. I guess we could and, look and at And Eugene is not that major. It's bigger than it was when I was out there, but it's it's still not, you know, it's not certainly not New York. Well, Bend, Oregon is not far from there. It's a wonderful yeah. town. Bend with mm-hmm. some ski areas too. Okay, well, now before we jump out, just give us the context of what we've been listening to. Astrocartography, you knew the guy who developed it. Just give us the thumbnail. We've already done an episode on it specifically. You can go back to that episode for more detail. But just in general, what is astrocartography? Jim Lewis was his name, a wonderful guy that I met in this men's group. As I said, it turned out we both, he's from New York. We both went to Vanderbilt. Well, how he got to Vanderbilt, I'll never know. Uh, he, he he was an astrologer. I'm an astrologer. He used to work for American Astrology Magazine. I still was working for American Astrology Magazine when we met. So we became instant friends and colleagues. And for the whole time I was living in San Francisco for about a year, uh, after that first day in the group, he said, why don't you come over to my place on Wednesdays and I'll show you what I know. And then I'll come over to your place next Wednesday. And you show. So we did that. And he was developing astrocartography in in those days and i actually at one point his volkswagen bug had bit the dust sort of it was being repaired and he needed to be driven around to vendors in those days he was having to use big plotters big plotting machines and so these were not nobody had pcs so uh, i drove him around and watched him create this and before jim lewis the only options that astrologers had was <laughs> All right, you're you're thinking about moving where, and they would give you a place, and you would have to set up a horoscope for that place to see how their natal planets fit into it, and you have to do that for every location that they thought about, but you never before this. Uh, and Jim ultimately sold this business for several million dollars, and good for him. Uh, but before astrocartography, you, know, you couldn't do this. You can look at it anywhere in the world and see where these lines are, whether they're angular and therefore influential. And then he published a, a, a small pamphlet, a booklet, to go with this originally. And he had me proofread it because I'd been writing a long time, too. And it was absolutely accurate. It had me losing weight in San Francisco, even, which I have never had a weight problem, but nonetheless, I did. So the idea, then, is we've been talking about Venus. So Venus in my chart, which is also in the show notes, is at 20 degrees Virgo, and that's 7 degrees away from the IC. So how does it take that position and put it on this map right here by Tampa, Florida? Don't ask me. I don't know the technology of it at all, other than this. the program theoretically is supposed to show you where Venus is. Uh, either on within orb, uh, which it is it's within what seven eight degrees of the IC or the MC. Ah, how they okay. how they calculate so this that? This is the I IC. Have no idea. Okay, got it. And then is there something related to it being on the IC? So Venus for me is IC, the the uh, nadir. But is is there something significant? Is there an interpretive factor about that that's different than if it were on the MC? Or is it the axis? You know, a shade of gray in a sense. If it's on the IC, then that tends to be a place where you will really feel most at home. And you may well work out of your home or earn money through your home or through real estate, if you happen to be in that business, or work out of your home. If it's in the the midheaven or the 10th cusp, then you do tend to be in love with your career more than even your home. But look at how reciprocal those are. If you're not happy at home, you're not going to be happy in your career and vice versa. Well, I like this Venus line. <laughs> I like everybody, it. everybody does because, as I say, it reflects you the best. It, it brings out, it reflects the best side of you, of anybody, if they can live under the Venus line. Well, this has been fun. Now, I have yeah. an idea because with your software, and uh, I have the similar program, that we can zoom down on geography. <laughs> so we can go in and look at a state in great detail 
that I thought maybe what we would do is as I start to move around this summer, because I can't stay in Florida, it's too hot down here, so we have to get up to a, a cooler climate that we'll drill down on some areas and explore where we might go from here. Sound good? Sounds good. Look, you got a Detroit line, Venus, right there. Ah, okay. Well, they so want me to come up, to up there. Motown. You can go up to Motown in the summers. Well, and Upper Michigan is that well, road that maybe. goes up. You can't get a campground. That's the only problem. I mean, it's really super populated up there in the summer, but uh, it's quite a drive from what I hear. It's spectacular. And there are parts, there are parts of Michigan that are really nice, too, in the summer. Yeah, but, yeah. So, all right. Well, but, you know, if, hey, good anywhere things along to think. That. But I don't know if that makes enough of a difference between whether it's in the 10th or the 4th. You know, it's the same with parents. Those houses rule the mother and the father. So you have a one parent experiences a health crisis, the other one is going to react to all that same crisis. So those houses are kind of reciprocal in that way. But either way, having Venus on the MCIC is good. <laughs> all right. Excellent. Good. Well, maybe I'll just zoom the Venus line all summer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not bad. All right. We'll work out a plan and keep you guys informed on this. This will be a really great application of astral cartography. Thanks, Robert, for that and for sharing your map with us. If you would like to talk to Robert about your own geography, then you can get him through our show notes. Everything is in there. We've got a lot going on. Our Discord channel is super active. We are doing a book club on fun astrology now. It's funastrologybookclub.com will take you to that information we've got our own YouTube channel thank you for subscribing to that all of Robert's podcasts are in a separate playlist all of those direct links are in the show notes thank you so much for listening we'll see you on the road or in the sky <laughs> next time